Welcome back to the 1-6 tutorial on painting an Obi-Wan Kenobi head sculpt. In this video, we will be going over how to paint lifelike skin tones to take the stock paint job to the finished paint job we see here. A question I'm often asked is what color do you use for skin tones? And the answer is a bit more complicated than that. I use a number of colors and layers of paint to achieve a lifelike skin tone. I do this by applying first two layers of a darker skin tone, then two layers of a lighter skin tone, followed by adding some pinks and purples to specific areas of the face. These layers are blended as we work through the process to achieve a subtle and hopefully realistic look. To apply the first coat of paint, load the brush and begin to work the paint into the sculpt with quick back and forth motions. Pay particular attention to the recessed areas of the sculpt, such as the nostrils and ears, in order to cover all areas of the skin. Don't worry about cleanliness or getting paint into the hairline at this stage as we can always clean this up later and a bit of skin tone into the hairline will help make a more natural transition. Once you've gotten the head covered, go back with an empty brush and smooth out the paint. It will still be streaky at this point, but try to reduce it as much as possible. And this is what you should have after the first coat of paint. It's not too pretty, but the future layers will help smooth it out and lead to an even skin tone. Once this is dried, we can apply a second coat of the dark skin tone and continue working on the head. The first layer is dry and not looking too good, but as we apply the second layer, you'll see it start to smooth out and become more even. This time around, and for the next two light skin tone layers, we're going to use less paint on the brush. It's not quite dry brushing, but pretty close. Just apply the layer, like before, blending it in until you get a nice smooth paint job. It's a good idea that while you're doing this to watch for any little bits of dried paint or dust that may have accumulated on either the brush or the sculpt itself. If you see any of these, remove them now because later on it will damage the paint if you have to remove them, sometimes taking it back down to the primer. Once that layer is dry, then you can apply two more coats of the light skin tone following the same technique until you reach this final look. At this point, the skin tone is still fairly flat but you can see some of the highs and lows from the darker and light skin tones. The next steps will add more depth and color to the paint job. A quick note on the skin tones. As you can see, I premix my paints. The reason for this is to make sure that my skin tones all make sense together. The darker skin tone is just a darker version of the light skin tone, and the pinks and purple tones we're about to add are done the same way. The first color is really just about a 50-50 mixture of the light skin tone and red. It's a good idea to mix this color in a container as we'll need it again later on. So what we do is brush a little bit of the pink tone under the cheeks, ears, forehead, and on the neck. Once this dries, we'll blend it back in with the lighter skin tone. It's best to work from the edges of the area into the center in order to blend the two tones. Do this over the entire head, and eventually the head should look something like this. The next step is to add a purple tone around the eyes. This time we mix a bit of the blue into the pink tone, and apply that around the eye area. And after you blend it back in, you should have a subtle darkness around the eyes. The final step of the skin tones is to do one more light layer of the pink, Soften that back out to hopefully blend in the overall tone and look of the paint job. And here we have the final skin tones. We have two layers of dark, two layers of light, a layer of pink that's been blended back in, a layer of the purple blended back in as well, and then finally a few touches of pink that we've blended back in. The next step is to seal this with dull coat. The dull coat will achieve two things. First, it protects the paint, and second, it will smooth it out a little bit, helping the overall appearance. And here is the head after we've applied the dull coat. As you can see, it does smooth out the paint just a little bit and gives it a more lifelike appearance. One other benefit of this is that later on, if we do make any mistakes while applying hair, eyes, or whatever, we can go back and quickly wipe that excess paint off as the dull coat acts as a barrier between the new and the old paint. So this wraps up the tutorial for painting the skin tones. If you have any questions or comments, please place them below, and be on the lookout for the next tutorial coming soon.